Welcome back, fuckers. All right. So, mistakes were made. Mistakes were made. So, uh, after we finished the last saw you, and I was like, yeah, I'm just going to keep recording. So, I pressed stop on the record to end the, uh, the video, and I pressed start again. Well, I thought I pressed start, and it turns out I didn't. So, uh, it didn't record the second sortie of that mission. So, we're going to have a look at the TAC view instead because that's the best I can do because I'm an idiot. So, apologies on that one, but we'll have a quick look on the TAC view. So, this is where we stand uh, on the mission debrief from the second sortie that didn't get recorded. Um, so, I ended up taking off again out of Insulic, and I flew in and managed to take out the S300 by myself. All right, so we did do some good work there. Destroyed all those units, which is awesome. Uh, we also did take care of the SA-11 site. Okay, that is totally destroyed. And SA-6 got cleaned up by the A-10s and stuff as well, which is cool. Uh, but the trade-off is we got our fucking shit punched in by the, uh, the AI aircraft. Well, more so the man pads, as you'll find out in a second. Um, we lost a fair few units. So out of, uh, not that one, out of, uh, we lost both A-10s, got shot down, we lost an F-15 and an F-16, and off of the uh, Tara, we lost both Harriers, and we also lost a Tomcat. Okay, so we took some pretty big casualties on the, uh, the aircraft front, uh, and also... Um, out of Hattay, so our ground units, we did actually get thumped pretty bad. Um, so I've had to buy some more units. We lost a couple of artilleries. Um, yeah, we, we took some pretty bad casualties down there. Uh, and the, the worst part is, is that uh, they've got a heap of people coming at us, but we'll go through that on the video after this one, which will be the next sortie that we're going to fly. It'll be a night sortie. But... Let's have a quick look at the TAC view. So this is our TAC view. We're going to zoom in on ourselves here. Double click on us. So we're the, uh, here we go. So we got taken off. So this is both sorties. Um, so F-16 cap or uh, seed flight is off. F-15s are off, and then our two Tomcats have left as well, and our, our uh, two, let's go here, I oh, know our uh, Tarawa tar stuff hasn't taken off yet because we delayed that one a little bit. All right, so we've got aircraft taken off, Tomcats are on station, and if we go back to us over here. There we are. We're just getting airborne now. So this was the first sortie. So we'll just kind of fast forward here. You guys saw how this all went. So I'll just fast forward through this one until we get back to the end because you guys can watch the video on that one. All right, so here we go. We RTB. Land. I'm like, yep, yeah, cool. See you guys later. I'll see us on the next sortie, and then that's where it stops. So this is the second sortie as of now. So we just got a rearm. We took the same loadouts. So we took three harms and two CVU 97s, and we went airborne. So we headed out pretty much the straight the same way. I wonder if I can turn off so many fucking things there. Anyways, we'll, uh, we'll have a quick look at all this stuff. So one thing to, that I didn't know is there is a heap of man pads. So you see how I put, I did say um, uh, man pads can spawn or will spawn alongside ground units. So look at them all. There's man pads everywhere. And that, I think, is what take, took out a lot of our uh, aircraft at the same time. So watch here as the A-10s. All right, they're, they're launching their, their harms out. These guys are diving down right in. There's a man pad right there. All right, you can see his threat ring. As soon as he gets into that little orange, uh, so the red circle, he's going to get launched on here. That guy is going to be in range. 6,000 feet. He is well within, and that man pad's going to take a shot at him here. There we go. Eagle missile is out. 
So this is what I think smoked a lot of our, uh, so luckily the A10 saw it and trashed it, but the A10s did get smoked by the, uh, the man pad. So that, and there's a heap of them. There's so many man, pa man pads around, which, um, yeah, not the greatest for a uh, ground attack. You got to, he's getting launched on again there. Same dude launches again, misses again. So all this while we're flying in, we're, uh, ingressing back in. And this A-10 is still flying around. Another A-10 doing another strike. And he got smoked. So we lost an A-10 to a, uh, an Igla there, a man pad. And these guys are just taking shots at him. So I think that's what happened to our uh, our Harriers and the A-10s. And all of our other units, I think, got shot down more so by man pads than anything else. So as soon as they hit the deck, you can see them all. Like man pads fucking everywhere. I didn't think it'd spawn that many in. So that's kind of annoying. Um, I mean, it makes ground attack a lot more sneaky because if you fly down low, you get into the, uh, the threat envelope, which I am not sure what the height is on that, but it's decent. I think it's like, at, you know, 16, 16 to 20,000 feet. They can take a shot at you. So he's at 7,000 getting shot at there. Launches, misses that one. And misses that one, and we're flying over the top here, well out of uh, range. All right, so this is where, if we go back to ourselves now, so that A-10's about to get smoked. His man pads got him good. Still flaring. So we'll just see what happens with his A-10, and then we'll have a look back. They get up to 23,000 feet before they detonate. All right, so he is still getting shot at here, so we'll go back to myself in a second. I'm just looking and seeing what these man pads actually do. So it looks like he he launched a uh, rocket or something like that. I don't know if it was a, uh, a Maverick. Rewind that a bit. Uh, rocket. Lazy got a rocket. Hit it, but didn't, do, didn't kill it. Meanwhile... Uh, that man pad got killed, but there's still these two guys over here, and he's going to turn right back in to the uh, the range of the man pads and start getting lit up again, and I'm sure he's about to die. Both the A-10s did get smoked, so he's well within the threat range now. They might be reloading. He's still flaring. And remember, these man pads, you're not going to get a warning. Uh, in A-10, you will. You'll get a, a missile launch. Um, because it'll pick up the infrared heat signature. Um, so they will get a warning, but in an F-16 or an F-18, unless you see the missile, um, you're not going to get any notification that it's shot at you. So these are very dangerous if you don't have your eyes uh, scanning out on the horizon. So let's just see what else happens to this guy. He's recommitting. These guys were probably reloading. He's turning back in. Oh, he put a, uh, a rocket out on him. One. And... Yeah, that definitely hit him. What killed this guy? This guy probably. Another man pad up on this hill. So this is where attack view is really good. Like, you can actually see what the hell happened on your, uh, your sorties. Really good when you die as well to figure out where they came from, what they did, and what you could do better. I'll go back to myself in a second. Um, let's just keep following this A-10. He's got to get smacked by something. Oh. What hit him? What the fuck? Did he just... He literally just speared into the ground. Uh, what? Unless he... Nothing shot at him. He took that target out. That was some random shit. He, he legit just crashed in. So he's at 1,500 feet, I think. And that's what, 017s? Yeah, looks about right. 1,800 feet. 
Nothing shooting at him, and then he just all of a sudden just spears on in. But yeah, look at all those man pads. All these little guys here, all man pads. This guy is at 22, 2,200, and then he all of a sudden just noses over. Let's watch it from his view. What the fuck? So this is right along with the A-10 here. This is what the A-10 is doing. This is what he sees. Kicking in. Airspeed on the, uh, the left there. Altitude on the right. Compass bearing on the top. So he's in a good old left-hand bank turn. And then all of a sudden... He just decides to nosedive in. What? Just uh, spears in. Okay. All right. Um, hmm. Interesting. All right. So let's go back to us after all that. So here we go. So we're cruising in. I'm at Angel 33 doing 0.9 Mac, and I'm flying at the S300 now. So I'm, I'm going for the S300 site. That's my plan. So here we go. So I'm flying along, all right? I've got a missile launch. Missiles are out on me, and now I'm going to start going nose up to loft the, uh, the missile. And what I did here is uh, I was – I was thinking I'm just going to pause it here. So I was uh, – Mucking around, I was saying to myself, hmm, because I was the whole time, because I've got the CB-97s on board my aircraft, it's wanting to roll left all the time. So I had to trim it out to the right pretty heavily. And I was like, hmm, maybe I can counterbalance my aircraft. And this is right as I'm about to take a shot, mind you. I'd only decided to do this right as I'm about to take a shot. I'm like, I wonder if I can, uh, I'm just going to switch stations and fire off my, um, fire off the, uh, the left pylon so that I can kind of counterbalance. I'm not as heavy on the left wing. And um, I won't have to trim so much, all right? And hindsight being 2020, I should have done that fucking well before I got within range of being shot at. I should have had that already set up before I decided to do this on the fly. And what ended up happening is I pressed the wrong button and I ended up cancelling the lock on the uh, the harm and I had to wait for it. So you'll see me, this is where I'm like, oh, fuck, oh, fuck. So I'm freaking the fuck out. I'm trying to get uh, reacquire the lock, waiting for my harm to pick up the seeker head. Meanwhile... The S-300 missiles are coming at me still super fast. I'm still trying, trying to get lock, waiting for it to pop back up, get a missile off, and then I'm like, fuck my life, and I am shitting my pants right now because I thought they were way closer than what they are. So I go into the vertical notch, straight to the deck, and then turn it into a split S and try and get the fuck out because I am shitting bricks thinking that I'm about to eat a uh, S-300 site, or S-300 missile. So away I go. Now... They didn't hit me, obviously, because I survived. Off they go. So aim one, so the aim, aim the fuck, AGM-88, or the harm, is on its way in, doing 2.3 Mac, Angel 17. In she goes. And let's have a look at what happens here. So this is what the S300 can do against itself, or can do to defend itself. So we've got a nice big old sand battery here. We've got... Now, S, uh, we've got Shilkers down there, and we've got a, a nice, good defense threat ring to defend itself. Harm still coming in here. Mac 1.1, so it's still got a fair, fair bit of speed on it. And let's get a left click on him, a right click there. God damn you. There we go. Three nautical miles. So we've got a range now. So a range, six mile. So I'm going to wait until they uh, actually launch a missile. I'll press pause. Missile out. All right, so from four nautical mile, this thing's still doing 0.91 max. So it's still going pretty quick. Uh, it's 5,700 feet in the air, and it's 4.27 nautical mile. The SA-10 has picked it up on its radar and it is launching missiles to save its ass, all right, because it's detected the threat ring or the other uh, harm is coming in, so it's firing missiles to try and uh, take it out. So the first one misses, 
second one does not. So they shot down my harm, which is why you need to have some serious speed on the aircraft. Meanwhile, back over over here, um, let's have a quick look at this. So as I come in, so remember, I've got no idea these uh, man pads are even a thing right now because I did not see them. I didn't even know it spawned this many in. So I've split est right into a man pad. All right, but luckily for me, this man pad is dead. Otherwise, uh, I would have been smoked. So I have totally no idea what um, what I nearly topped, and I would not have seen this thing like, at all because all I was looking over my shoulder, still like these things are still firing at me. So I'm still looking over my shoulder, trying to pick up the missiles um, to see if I can uh, recommit. So it's super close. Uh, I've got to take that in consideration when you're doing split S's, you don't want to dive to the deck really low. Um, you want to try and keep some altitude so that uh, you don't go into the threat ring of a man pad and get fucked up. So here we go. And that's another lesson. Okay. If you're going to split S away, make sure you're split Sing away from uh, enemy units. And again, another man pad over here. No idea that uh, he's there. And all I'm doing is um, just flying around totally oblivious to that. Like if I would have, you know, not turned so far to the to the left there and just kept flying straight and then recommitted a bit later, you know, I would have flew straight in there and got smoked. So 100% super lucky on that one. Uh, and I've learned from that from watching the attack. I was like, holy shit, okay, man pads is a thing. Let's, um, let's, let's be a bit more careful around there. So we are going to recommit. So I've fired one harm. I've got two left, two harms left. So cruising in. Now I think this dotted line, I think when it goes green, it means I've got a radar lock or it's locking me. Either way, it's detected a lock on me. Uh, I think that's what it means. They've got a radar lock on me. And then when it goes to the dotted line, it means it's trash, like they've, uh, they've lost me. So I'm flying in, nose hot again, uh, I'm trying to stay low. Keep my speed up. Yeah, one Mac one. I have uh, picked him up. I did a bit of a lob, but this lob is terribly not going to give it. So, what's our range? We're 24 nautical mile from the SAM site. And again, I don't have a range. I'm just like kind of, well, I do, I guess. I've got the, uh, the bearing, the waypoint in my HUD. But um, from 22 mile on the deck, a harm in a HAS, harm as seeker mode is not going to cut the mustard and you'll see in a second as we come up we pop the shot about 20 mile away let's go to our harm so again it's firing missiles at me not at the other harm yet i've gone into trying to go into the notch and trash these missiles and i'm trying not to uh, get out of radar so i want to try and keep the s300 looking at me rather than my uh, seeker my harm to give it a chance to hit but you can see what happens to the harm here it's uh three three thousand feet two thousand feet is coming down and it's not going to make it all right just literally runs out of uh altitude so it doesn't loft in um as seeker mode like it does in the uh the range unknown mode which I think I'll be doing a little bit more of. So you can see it's at uh, 1,700 feet. Maybe that's 150 feet. Yeah, 150 feet. Coming in low. Skimming the ground and then it just fucking doesn't make it. So I didn't have the uh, the legs. So, and I don't know that that didn't hit because I'm not looking on F, uh, F10 mode, uh, sorry, F10 or uh, F6 view. So I am just assuming that they shot it down again. I've got one harm left now, so I've recommitted again. Um, so they're firing at me already. Oop. Recommit. So missiles are out. So because it didn't hit and they're still firing at me, I'm like, all right, I need to get closer. So what I'm doing now, I'm trying to put the uh, the SA-10 in the notch. I'm trying to put my left wing tip right at the uh, S-300 radar to try and trash the radar. I'm punching out flares and chaff. It does both, but I'm putting out chaff 
mainly trying to get this missile to disappear. And you can see when uh, it's losing lock. You watch the, the line here. All right, so it's um, my radar, or sorry, my notching and my chaff is actually working because it's making the missile lose lock. And then once the uh, the missile, once I get out of the radar, it just detonates the, uh, the warhead, detonates it so that it just explodes. So if you can trash the radar lock, it just detonates the missile and you're good to go. So I wasn't getting any more radar lock. So I recommit now. And this is where it was weird. So as I was coming in, um, I still had the uh, the BB on the RWR and I could see it on my seeker head, but they weren't shooting at me. So I was like, I had it locked up. I was just waiting for it to um, to start firing at me, which it never did, as you'll see. So I'm cruising in here. Uh, what is it? Is it? Oh, it's alt. There we go. Fast forward. Hold down right alt and move the mouse. So I'm at 12 nautical mile. Fire. I give it a bit of a loft, and then same deal. From 12 nautical mile at uh, 4,000 feet. I think that is 4,000. I wasn't very high anyway. I was on the deck. But the same thing happened to the harm. I didn't have enough altitude. And this harm is going to fall short as well. All right. Harm just falls short. Did it? Well, it hit, but it didn't destroy anything. It missed, actually. But... They didn't shoot at me. So they, I, on the way in, I was like, fuck it, I'm going in. We, if I die, I die. So in we go. No regard to, uh, I had no thoughts about if there was, <laughs> didn't even see that. Or I was getting shot at by ground units, ground fire. Didn't even see that. I was just task focused. I'm like trying to put a CBU on these guys. Like, I'm going down. Had no idea that this was an airfield that I just flew past. Like no idea. Because all I was thinking or looking at was my little target, my waypoint. And I'm like, I'm going to put a CBU 97 and get rid of this thing. If I die, at least it'll be at the expense of taking out an S300. So I put a CBU 97 down in the area there. Down she goes. Hits a few things. I saw it explode. So I was looking over my left shoulder as I've turned away. Saw it and taking targets out. And I was like, all right, I'm coming in again. Fuck it. One more because I had two CBU 97. So I come in. Uh, as I come back around, I'm using the targeting pod now to sweeten the... I was just using the waypoint before. Now I've used the targeting pod to designate a spot on the ground. Come in, put a CBU-97, and this one is a lot better. A lot better CBU. So down she goes. CBU in, and there we go. She just did some good damage, that one. And end up taking out a fair bit of stuff. There's one launch left and you know, a few ZU-23 shilkers. And then we RTB. That is pretty much it. Off we go. RTB, and I landed at Hatte. And that's pretty much how the uh, the sortie went down, boys and girls. But uh, yeah, for some reason, I swear I pressed record, but clearly I didn't because it didn't record it. And um, tack view is where it's at. So that is the tack view. If you haven't used tack view, uh, it's free to download. So I've got the standard edition. Yeah, tack view standard edition. Um, so it is free to use TacView, but if you want to have more options to do things, um, there's different, uh, additions, I guess, so standard and then elite or something, I don't know, but it's cool to watch your flights back. And as long as the uh, server doesn't have TacView disabled in one of the options, when you're the mission maker, doesn't disable TacView, um, you can pull your TacView files off most, most places, uh, a lot of the multiplayer servers don't have TACView, but they've got a link that you can download the TACView file from the mission. Uh, if you want to watch your stuff back, you just have to wait until the uh, mission resets and they'll upload it onto their website, like Growling Sidewinder, for example. You can get the uh, TACView off there and watch it as well. But uh, really cool little handy tip if you want to know what the hell happened to you, what shot you, and then you can kind of break it down and figure out what went wrong and how you can stop it from happening again. So we're going to do a tack view um, every time that I die, which I haven't died yet, surprisingly. I have not been killed yet. 
Uh, but if I do die, we'll do a, a debrief of the tech view afterwards and then we'll do some lessons learned and see if I can uh, figure out what killed me. Uh, most of the time it would be my own stupidity. I did something that I shouldn't have done. That's pretty much nine times out of ten when people die because they did something that they probably shouldn't have, got a bit too aggressive, pushed too far, and then got paid for it with their uh, their their life. They got killed. So, yeah, we're going to do a attack view debrief if I die or when I die on every sortie that happens. Cool. So I hope uh, I hope you guys got something out of that mission, even though um, you couldn't actually watch me flying it. Um, we got to see it from like a, yeah, a fast forward and rewind real world position. So takeaway points from this one from the attack view is uh, with the man pads enabled, there is a lot of them. It spawns a lot of man pads in. Um, and you do not want to get low uh, without flares on uh, when you're flying in the... Uh, so all this is in the front line. So where the, the orange lines are on here, that's where all the man pads are on that front line. Okay, and spawning man pads in on the orange line. So if you're anywhere near the orange line, you want to really uh, have your head on a swivel and looking out for uh, for missile launches and have flares because... A uh, an IR missile is not going to give a shit about chaff, all right. And mistake on my behalf, I took a whole heap of chaff and not many flares. I ran out of flares real quick. And in the F-16, unfortunately, you can't, or you can if you do a program, but in bypass mode, it fires one chaff, one flare every time you pull the trigger, and that's what I use. Um, so that is something I've got to be more aware of if I'm flying around the uh, the front lines. Just be careful of of the IR threats. So yeah, so our next sortie will be at night time and we're going to have a whole heap of shit going out against us. But anyways, guys, I hope you did like it. If you did, make sure you go ahead and hit the like button for me. Um, the more likes the video gets, the better uh, exposure it gets, I, am, I believe. I've got no idea, let's be honest. I don't know how, how YouTube works. Um, but yeah, let me know that you liked it. If you've got anything to say in the comments, fucking throw them in there. Um, and... If you haven't hit the subscribe button, it'd be super, super awesome if you did hit the subscribe button for the YouTube channel. Uh, we're at, we just cracked 890, I believe, 890 subscribers, uh, which is awesome. If we can get to the 1,000, then um, I may, not saying I will, but I may qualify for the YouTube partnership, which means then I can start making a bit of moolah off of the old YouTube, which is absolutely crazy. So, um, yeah, that's the next goal. See if we can get to the 1,000 mark thousand subscribers so if you have already thank you for being a legend if you haven't really appreciate it if you do hit subscribe not only that does it help me out it'll also let you know when uh, i post a new video up and lastly but not least i do stream on twitch uh, monday to friday at 1300 australian western standard time uh, so if you haven't already come on in say good day uh, if you've got any questions you can ask live on stream and we'll do our best to to help you out and you can come in, you can hang out, and we actually we are actually at the moment doing a dynamic liberation dynamic campaign stream edition. So I'm doing a like a co-op version where uh, if anyone, if anyone wants to come in for a fly, just got to have um, SRS to talk on comms, and then let me know what jet you want. Let me know um, if you've got the super carrier, for example, so I can get you taken off of the carrier, or if you don't have it, I can put a jet in on a uh, runway for you, and I'll give you a mission, and you can go and. Uh, and help a brother out and we do a dynamic campaign but yeah thanks guys hope you enjoyed it and i'll catch you guys on the next one which i fucking will make sure i hit record all right catch you later guys have a good one